Somebody ought to shout Jesus. Hallelujah. What a powerful presence of the Lord that's here. Welcome to Beyond Borders 2023. We know God is going to do extraordinary and wonderful things. Amen. Before we kick off and start focusing on the world, we know that revival is contingent upon home. Without a healthy home base, there can be no revival beyond. Thank God for the blessings of revival here in North America. And so we begin every Beyond Borders praying, not just for Eastgate Church, but we pray for our local neighbors, those that are in our section with us. And we're so blessed to have uh, some of our neighboring pastors here tonight. I'm so honored to have Brother Carl Vickery with us, a neighboring pastor and our sectional leader. Amen. And I'm thankful to have Brother Adams here, our, our neighbor. I want Brother Adams to come. We're going to have the names of our churches, and let's pray. I want you to lift your voice. Let's pray for revival. Come on, we want revival in every church in our area. All right, let's pray together. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Reverend George Adams, Finette Calvary Tabernacle. We pray for the Pentecostals of Pine Forest today. We pray for Reverend Christopher Bandark, North Orange Pentecostal Church, Brother Carr, the Apostolic Church, Brother Robert Edwards, True Faith Tabernacle in Orange, Brother Jonathan Green, the Anchor, Beaumont, Texas, Brother Nathan Keating in the Parkway Life Church of Lumberton, Reverend Michael Labrie, Gospel Tabernacle of Beaumont, for Brother James Lee, Landmark Pentecostal Church in Port Natchez, Brother Brandon Looney, UPC of Orangefield, Brother Marlon Markentale in Pinehurst, Brother Daryl McCoy, the Pentecostals of Nederland, Port Arthur, First Pentecostal Church, Brother Timothy McGraw, Leglasia Apostolic at Beaumont, Reverend Jason Meyer, the Abundant Life Sanctuary of Groves, Reverend Jody Pittman, New Life Apostolic Church, Mauriceville. God, we call your name over every one of these churches, every, every one of these ministries. We pray that a rushing mighty wind from the throne of heaven would blow through every building, through every church, Lord, and fill all the house where we're sitting and where we're worshiping and where we're praising. We pray for Murray Burt Ray in Bridge City. We pray for Mildred Robinson, the powerhouse church of Beaumont, Brother Anton Smichael, Port Acres, Brother William Smith, Pinehurst, Brother Carl Vickery, Calvary Tabernacle of Beaumont, and Winnie, Brother Gary Wheeler, First United Pentecostal Church of Orange. We call your name, we plead the blood. We ask you to move by your power, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, we magnify your name. We glorify your name, Lord. We need you in this hour, Lord. We need the Holy Ghost in this hour, God. We can't do it without you, Lord. We need you to anoint us. We need you to empower us. We need you to touch us. We ask it all in the name that's above every name. We ask it in the only name under heaven, given among men whereby we must be saved. We pray it all in the matchless, wonderful name of Jesus. One more time, why don't we put our hands together and give God a great praise. Come on, let's give him praise and expectation of what he's going to do in the house. We're thankful for what he's done, but come on, what he's going to do is greater. Beyond Borders has been reaching around the world. This year we were privileged to give and go to, over, to ride at 53 nations. Through the remainder of the weekend we'll be talking and celebrating the great accomplishments of our local assembly. But I believe that God tonight wants to speak to us. He wants to speak to us as individuals. He wants to speak to us as a corporate body. Amen. We've prayed over our local assemblies and neighbors, but right now I want you to take your hand. I want you to lay it on yourself, on your heart. Amen. Sometimes the hardest person to pray for is the one you know the best. Before we move on, amen, I want you just to pray because tonight God has a word He's about to open up for you. Heavenly Father, as we lay our hands on our hearts, faith for my neighbors so simple for they seemingly have it all together but I know the thoughts dear God that I have I know the thoughts and the fears my anxieties and depression 
And I know, dear God, that you are able to do exceeding abundantly. But I pray now for me. I pray for my marriage. I pray, God, for my children. I pray for my, the doubt. I speak against it in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Every demonic lie, every force of darkness be bound in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout in Jesus' name. Amen. We've done a lot of great things, but the best is before us. I want to welcome you to Beyond Borders 2023. Amen. Let's have revival and let's do it again. Amen. You can be seated. presence and what a wonderful wonderful presence of the Lord that's already met us here I know God has incredible things in store for us all of our guests and friends that are here in particular though we want to give honor for those that have come an extra long way brother Andreas and if you would stand from Norway he'll be ministering to Sunday morning and we love you you're no stranger at Eastgate but uh, we are uh, we are great great fans and his girls are with him I believe Amen. There they, go ahead and stand. We want to. We got the twins with us. Amen. We're honored. They are here, and we are so very thankful that they were able to come. Of course, Brother Helio, all the way from uh, Elio, all the way from the Netherlands. I don't think he's ever missed a Beyond Borders. He is a, a regular, and we love him. And uh, so very very thankful. Of course, we will have Brother Ancestor Jones from Honduras with us. Brother Grimm is with us as well, I believe. Are the Grimm's here tonight? Amen. Brother Grimm, where are they at? Where are they at? Oh, okay, right, right up there on the balcony. Amen. <laughs> West Africa, we love and appreciate them. And of course, my parents are here. Uh, Bishop uh, Tuttle of Europe and Middle East still for a little while, for a few more months. Amen. So why don't we stand, honor him. We have retired missionary, Brother Sister Smith. We love them from Spain and Bolivia, and we're so very, very thankful they're here. We're especially honored as well to have Brother Van Chorup with us all the way from Brussels, Belgium. And uh, he preached for us several Beyond Borders ago. Matter of fact, he just landed. He just landed in Houston and drove straight to church. And, and I said, well, that's a great time to give a testimony. It won't go too long. Hallelujah. He's tired, amen. So we want Brother Van Corp to come. He's a great preacher. He loves this great truth. He's doing a great work right downtown. I've known Brother Van Corp as long as I can remember. He's a great friend. I love you. Praise God. I feel the presence of the Lord here tonight. Can you feel that? That's the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. Amen. I bring you greetings from the church in Brussels and Belgium where God is doing great things. A couple of months ago, we celebrated our 10-year pastoral anniversary in our church in Brussels, and we maxed out to 150 people. The, amen. Come on, Europeans. That's revival. Amen. Our people were sitting until the front door. You literally walked into the church and there were people sitting there. And so we were excited about that. But none of that would have been possible without a conference and a church like this. Uh, it is because of missions and because of your giving to missions that a church like that would have been established in Brussels, Belgium. I was not raised in this. I, I was 19 years old when my oldest brother was suicidal um, and, and wanted to stop life. And he traveled to the United States to get on a holiday, 
God started to work in his life the day when he was about to fly back to Belgium God started to work on him and the moment before he stepped on the airplane he told God God if you want me to be baptized in Jesus name and be filled with the Holy Ghost you have to stop me right now or I'll miss it and the flight attendant walked to him and he says you cannot board the plane there's a bomb threat on the airplane you'll need to fly out tomorrow morning I, I didn't make that up God made that up that night that night he got baptized in Jesus name and God filled him with the Holy Ghost he came back to Belgium with the revelation of the name of Jesus I looked at my brother I said I want what you have he baptized me my brother my mom and my dad in the swimming pool of my parents in the name of Jesus Christ somebody shout Jesus God brought us to the church in Brussels that was pastored by missionary Chula because of your giving and your vision I am the product of global missions and I give God the praise and the honor for that what you will do here this weekend changes lives God bless you as we begin to praise him I told the church Monday on prayer we begin to praise him he inhabits the praises of his people amen he, he can't lie he's not a man when you begin to praise him he shows up and his presence is there and that brings a realization that there's a God but we don't just want a realization that there is a God a lot of people think wow I, I felt him his presence was there well that's great but I want the power of God amen I said I want power don't, don't, don't misinterpret that thing just because he showed up. He'll show up and say, yeah, I ain't living right. You're just praising God. And he shows up and you think that's a stamp of approval on living wrong. Come on. He has to show up when you praise him. But what happens when the word of the Lord is preached? Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For therein is the power of God. So thank God we've praised him. And if you didn't know there was a God, come on, look at your neighbor and say, there is a God. And that God is in this house. Now, as you make your way back to your seat, say, now I'm ready to experience the power of that God. I want to move from realization to revelation. And that can only come through the preached word of God. And then I believe before we leave this house, as we begin to pray, there will be a demonstration and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost like we've never, ever seen before. I came expecting that tonight. As you remain standing in honor of God's word, we're so honored to have Sister Herod with us. Amen. The newly elected. RD of Europe and her and her husband we're so thankful that she is with us and we're just honored and privileged to, to have each of you with us uh, and I'm excited about what God is going to do Brother Herring has been a part of Eastgate Church uh, for as long as I've been the pastor here he's pre preached to this church he's helped transition break strongholds uh, he's, we fought devils together he's my personal friend and prayer partner we speak daily and I believe the Lord has given him a word for us tonight. I know without a doubt that God is going to speak through him to us. We're honored that Sister Herring and the children, the whole family is here. They drove all the way from Dallas after evangelizing over 20 years. They've just been pastoring now for less than a year. And uh, I mean, they're, they're at the, hitting 100 people every Sunday, less than a year. Baptizing, he sent me a video a couple weeks ago, baptizing people in swimming pools in, in Frisco, Dallas, Texas. They're having revival. And he's here with us tonight. Uh, you're here tonight. God's here tonight. Man, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, amen. If you're expecting God to do something in your life, why don't you put your hands together and welcome God's man, Brother Josh Herring. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you love Jesus, would you get loud as you can and clap your hands, lift up your voice, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The devil's not happy that you're here. 
something's going to happen tonight. And it's such a high honor for our family to be here at Beyond Borders. What an incredible atmosphere. So much faith is in this room. And so much expectation is here. And I just want to say, first of all, thank you to this church for having us. And I love your pastor with all my heart. I hope you love Pastor Matt Tuttle and appreciate everything he does globally, nationally, locally. And uh, we, we are prayer partners and we're also message partners and we work on our messages together. You know, he works on mine. And uh, I send him a horrible thought. He makes it a great thought, which is probably most of this message here tonight. But uh, you're so, I say it every time I'm here, you have the best preacher in America, best preacher on the planet as your pastor. You're so blessed. He doesn't need to have any guest speaker for a Beyond Borders Missions Conference. He would just do quite well right here. And to Bishop Tuttle and to all the men of God, all the great men of glory on this platform, Bishop, I also honor you tonight. We're so thankful to be a part of this. I give my honor to my beautiful wife, Janae, and our four kids who are sacrificing continually and revival is breaking loose and we're so thankful last week we had a lady walk up on a wednesday night and she said i've watched your messages on youtube and i'm here to be baptized in jesus name and the problem was our baptistry had been stolen and so she said it was cold she said can you baptize me tonight i said yes we can and so i texted a friend i said how is your pool warm he said no it's 54 degrees she said is there anywhere to baptize me? I said, yes, there is. She said, all right, after church. So I'm up there preaching, knowing we have nowhere to baptize her. And we get up and we announce she's going to be baptized tonight in Jesus' name. And then as I was preaching, some lady in the back went back and called a gym and said, can we use your gym to baptize? Well, that, we didn't even ask the lady, and, she, and they said yes. So we walked into a big old L.A. fitness with our church, and they're all just staring at us in our suits and everything we got in the pool baptized her and then walked out of the gym and everyone was just looking we're here to take over that's the only thing i'm that's what we do praise god genesis chapter 15 job chapter 28 james chapter 4 genesis chapter 15 5 through 11 job 28 verse 7 james 4 verse Seven. Genesis 15 verse 5 says and he brought him forth abroad and said look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall thy seed be and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness he said unto him I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it and he said Lord God whereby shall i know that i shall inherit it he said to him take me an heifer of three years old a she goat three years old a ram of three years old a turtle dove and a young pigeon he took unto him all these divided them in the midst and laid them peace one against another but the birds divided he not and when the fowls came down somebody say when the fowls came down so several translations say vultures came down upon the carcasses abram drove them Away. Job chapter 28 and verse 7 says, There is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. In James chapter 4, verse 7, you should know this one Submit yourselves therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. My assignment tonight is to preach to you at war with vultures. At war with with vultures lord jesus thank you for what you're about to do in this place we take authority over anything that's tried to come in here with any family and we command anything demonic to be broken and to be removed from the atmosphere and we thank you right now that miracles are in this room and deliverance is in this room and healings and breakthroughs and sacrifice so many things are in here but most importantly we think that you are in here and we know anything can happen if you're in the room and so we come fully believing that no matter what the adversary is or says you will get the last word in the end if you love him and you believe he's going to do something would you clap your hands to jesus right now hallelujah
High five your neighbor, tell them let's roll. You may be seated. I believe that this is not some deep revelation, but there is one thing that heaven and hell are both attracted to. There's something that angels are attracted to, God's attracted to, demons are attracted to. Obviously, Satan is a demon, and so he's attracted to it, and that is sacrifice or commitment. I believe it is something powerful when a child of God decides I'm going beyond where I was before and I'm going to do something for God that I've never done before. Whether that's giving or fasting or praying or serving, I'm going to sacrifice and commit to a level I never have before. That gets heaven's attention and that gets hell's attention quicker than anything because sacrificing says I am dead serious about what I need God to do in my life I'm laying down the distraction I'm laying down the excuses I'm laying down everything that's in the way because I have a need that only God can answer and so I'm going to go after God with everything and is there anybody serious in here about what you need God to do in your house in your country So when somebody starts fasting or praying or witnessing or reading their Bible all the time or giving or serving, they are telling the spirit world, I'm as serious as I can possibly be. Don't tell me you're serious if you don't sacrifice. Don't tell me you're serious if you can't serve and if you can't give and if you can't pray and you don't fast. I don't want to hear any testimony from that, but I love the people that say whatever it takes, whatever it costs you can count me in sign me up pastor because I am serious about what God's going to do in my life give me some young people that are dead serious I'll show you a city that the strongholds will come down because young people with a serious mindset will bring revival the devil is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour so if you are in the flesh and you don't lay things on the altar and you let that flesh live you are attracted by the enemy that is attracted to you is the lion it's a the lion kills flesh and then eats the flesh it's a predator and so it's attracted to flesh so the more you say I'm not going to sacrifice to God the more likely you're in for a lion fight in your future that you want no part of. He is as a roaring lion looking for who he may devour. He's looking for flesh. He loves bad attitudes. He loves critics. He loves the skeptics and the non-worshippers and the people that are the problem every other day no matter what you do for them. He loves that because that is flesh. That is alive. What type of spirit do you face if you are killing the flesh? If you are trying to be serious? If you are giving and praying and fasting and doing all you can? If the lion is attracted to flesh that's alive, what is attracted to flesh that is dead? And that is where the vultures enter in lions hunt their prey vultures do not they are scavengers and they feed off of dead flesh they feed off of sacrifices they feed off of commitments made to God they're the ones that show up after you make up your mind I'm going to do something for God the vulture is what comes by circling the sacrifice vultures circle dead things Contrary to popular opinion, vultures do not circle dying flesh. It has to be dead for the the vulture to be attracted to it. Hell does not circle hypocrites. You can fake the whole church out and be a poser on the platform and dance all you want, but hell knows if you're the real deal on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
You can act like you're living for God and you're so holy and you're everything. But the devil knows if you're living it at the house like you're living it at the sanctuary. Vultures do not circle flesh that's still alive. It has to be dead. Hell is attracted to the real thing. Vultures do not eat rotting meat. It has to be freshly killed. Freshly dead. That even makes sense. The meat has to be fresh. It's not attracted to old sacrifice. Hell doesn't care what you gave five years ago. I lost all the shouters. Hell doesn't care about your fast ten years ago. They want to know what are you about to do now. Oh, it's getting quiet. I feel the spirit world right there. They want to know how far are you going to go now because that, that, that sacrifice is over. They don't want that because they lost that battle. But what they are attracted to, what are you about to do in 2023 for God that you've never done? They don't want last year's consecration. They want to know what your plan is this year. That's the vulture. The vulture can fly up to 30 thousand feet in the air higher than Mount Everest what's that mean no matter how high you get in God they're looking for you don't don't ever assume that you've arrived in some pinnacle at the devil the devil loves pinnacles he took Jesus to a pinnacle and said I know you like high places he took him to a mountaintop the vulture loves it when you get high as far as you can in God and say take me as the, into the highest the vulture said we can go there too the vulture will travel up to 1,250 miles for a dead meal no matter how far you go, hell is hungry for your sacrifice. Some people think, well, as soon as I lay it on the altar, I've got victory over the devil. But they don't understand that when something's coming and there's a fresh connection with God, you are never more attractive to the enemy. Jesus said that when you, the word comes, when the sower sows the seed, which is the word, and when it hits the wayside, the fowls or the vultures. And then he, then he named who the vultures were. He said, and by the way, the birds are Satan. In case you're wondering, anytime you get a word from God, something starts circling. Anytime you leave an altar call, making up your mind, I'm going to do something for God like I never have. I'm going to be more focused than I've ever been. Something. says, I smell dead flesh. Vultures start scavenging when the sun rises. Just as soon as your early morning prayer's over, bro. This is why you feel God at 7 a.m., but don't feel him at noon because something comes to your altar between breakfast and lunch, and you feel, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. You feel like a different person at lunch than you were in the prayer closet because there's a vulture attracted to your commitment. They are attracted to dead flesh, not almost dead flesh. Paul said, I die daily. Not I almost die daily. Well, I just have my morning devotion. Do you know what devotion means? To slaughter, to utterly destroy, to exterminate, 
to extinguish. Don't tell me that you're slaughtering your flesh if you forget your prayer meeting five minutes later. You warmed up the coals on the altar, but you've learned the e evil secret of untying yourself from the altar anytime it gets too hot and conviction gets too real. I just turn pastor off when he gets on the subject that I'm not submitted in, and therefore I just get off the altar and you still got lions on your trail because the lions is, yeah, get rebellious, get an attitude because you don't want that flesh to die. But as soon as the offering is on the altar, as soon as you make the commitment, here they come. As soon as you go to a youth event young person HYC or whatever it is in AYC and you come back on fire and I'm going to save this city it's not coincidence you meet the girl the next week it's not coincidence you meet that boy a couple of days later or on the flight home that's the vulture well I might win her you're 12 She might be the one. You're 13, dude. She's not the one. If she is the one, you're still not ready, Holmes. Over there trying to convince Dad I've met my wife. Like, dude, you're in middle school. You're gonna run away and marry her? They're attracted to the commitment. This is why Judas showed up right after Jesus said, okay, not my will but fine be done and here came the vulture ready Satan only came at Jesus twice the first time when he fasted 40 days and the second time inside of Judas when he had an all night prayer meeting and his prayer and his sweat was as drops of blood and he said okay I'll take on the cross here came the vulture If they come at Jesus in the flesh, don't you think they're attracted to you whenever you say, I want more of God? There are two places on the body that the vulture eats first. The first thing the vulture always goes for is the eyes hmm. vultures want to eat the source of your vision well I'm praying and I'm fasting and I'm giving everything but I just don't see I just don't see how God's going to do you just admitted something's on your altar they want that vision where you don't believe without a vision the people perish the eyes the things that make tears well, I just can't cry in the presence of God well, it's quiet right there where well, real men don't cry I guess Jesus was a wuss then Does he prayed with strong cryings and he wept for Lazarus. And I'm pretty sure Jesus went to a cross that no dude in here would want to go to. So that's a vulture telling you that you can't cry in the house of God. If there's ever a place where tears should roll out of your eyes, it's in the presence of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And I'm not ashamed to weep about it. I'm not ashamed to pray and cry. So Judas, Judas kissed that cheek where the tears were flowing. That's what the vulture is attracted to, the vision. And the second place the vulture eats is the tongue. So after the vision, it goes for your voice. 
Because if you can't see God doing it, you won't speak God will do it. For faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if you don't see it and you don't believe it, you won't speak it. I'd like to preach to some people that have had some vultures eating your vision. You better keep your tongue. I may not be able to see it, but I'm opening up my mouth and I'm going to declare it. We will have revival. We will see our family saved. Get away from my own. Are there any blind praisers in here? I don't know where God is. He's not on the left. He's not on the right. But I'm going to open up my mouth and praise him anyway. Because the vulture cannot have my voice. Somebody praise him like nobody's in the building. I dare you to worship God like nobody's around. There are 23 species of vultures in the world. 22 of them will flee if you make loud noise. Oh, we thought it was dead. We thought no one cared about it. Abram drove them away or in the Hebrew he blew the horn he made some noise you can't just sacrifice and hope God sees it you've got to open up your mouth every day and remind hell I gave last year I fasted three days I prayed when pastor said show up I showed up you need to remind the adversary you can't have what's on my altar Somebody make some noise with a war cry and let the world hear you. Somebody pray in tongues right now. Twenty-two. Of the 23 species, fly away. But there's one the black vulture. It doesn't fly away when you make noise. In fact, loud noise, clapping of hands, bright lights, and music. Do not frighten this scavenger for it believes that all of these are just scare tactics that will not be followed through with an attack. I'm sorry. In other words, there is a spirit that doesn't take you serious just because you know the song. Just because the lights are bright and just because you get to be on the platform. Oh, I'm losing half of you. Some spirits think that what you do in here, you will not follow it up out there. Help me, Jesus. Some spirits think you only shout in here because you only shout in here. Well, I'm losing all the crowd. I better get back to the hype. Do you want to scare the the lower-ranking vultures or are you after the thing that knows, oh, you're serious? The black vulture only flees when it is resisted. 
or when someone takes a stand against it. And says, I'm not here to clap and scare you. I will kill you if you try to get near my baby. I will fight you if you get near my fast. I will fight you if you get near my parents. I will fight you if... I wish somebody would get a war cry anointing and tell hell, I'm coming for you. Get away from my commitment. Get away from my atmosphere. Get away from my prayer life. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist. The devil. And he will... Flee, in the Greek says, he will seek safety by flight. Not he will fly away. He will seek safety because he assumes you're chasing him. See, some spirits aren't even worried about most churches because they know you only get serious on Sunday and on Wednesday, and when, when pastor calls a fast. But when they see you start chasing them, when they say you get up for prayer and no one's around, what they're saying, you, this is what the devil literally says, it's not safe here anymore for me. Too many of you want the devil to leave your house with your music that plays in the background, but you don't read your Bible. He's not leaving. He's not leaving because you read a good quote on social media that encouraged you. He's not leaving. When someone texts you an encouraging word, he's not leaving. He's leaving when you look at him and say, whatever it takes, I am going to get you out of this house if it's the last thing I do. Where are the warriors up in here? You need to stare down hell and say, I'm coming for you. You think you've been coming for me? I'm coming for you. I'm coming after everything that you're stealing from me. Well, does it really matter? Can I just be in the flesh? The devil, leave me alone. I don't know. Can you put up those verses for me? Revelation 19, 16 through 21. This is the King James. I wanted to, if you got the NLT, I want that, but if you don't, it's okay. Because this is what it says in the King James, and I'll tell you what it says in the NLT. This is the end time. He hath on his vesture and his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, verse 17. I saw an angel standing in the sun. He cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls. In the NLT, it says, Vultures that fly in the midst of heaven. Come and gather yourselves together under the supper of the great God. Verse 18. That ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Verse 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all. In other words you don't make it dinner time for the vultures you take the mark dinner time for the vultures you don't commit dinner time I don't care how much money you have 
don't care what position you have. If kings are eaten, then anybody can be eaten. And I know it's serious and it's making you uncomfortable. But I've come to challenge not physical vultures, but the spirit world right now. And I want to let them know, whatever happens this weekend, whatever happens Sunday night, I come against anything that would devour it and remove it from the atmosphere. And I declare by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus that we will not just stand, we will not just shout, but we will chase everything that's been coming at our families, at our marriages, at our lost loved ones, and we will sacrifice, and we will drive them away. Does the vulture hear your shout or does the vulture see your stand? Stay standing. Do they know you get hyped up? Which I love the shouting. I'd love to have that more than anything, this type of message. But the shout without substance is just vulture food. That's why you forget what pastor preached two minutes after you leave church. What a powerful word. Yeah, what was this text? I forget. What was the title? I forget. You go to witness to a coworker. Boy, you should have been there yesterday. God really moved. We had an incredible message. What did he preach? I'll think of it. And then you blame your own mind. But you didn't forget the score of the game last night. Oh, it's quiet. You don't forget the words of that song. Why are you only forgetting messages? Because the stuff's not trying to steal the sports score or the song. It's trying to steal the word that's trying to be placed in your spirit over your destiny. And hell is used to shallow shouting. I gotta praise, gotta let it out. I'm burning calories. I'm doing cardio, acting like I'm worshiping. Really don't know. Hell knows you're not dead. But if you shout, you better have some substance. This is for my kids, this is for my future. This is for my healing. This is for my deliverance. I wish somebody would show the devil just how loud you can get, just how serious you can shout, and get some substance behind it. This is for our revival. This is for the wall being broken through and more people coming in. This is for my lost loved one. If you're going to shout, take a stand while you shout and drive out the... I can be myself here. Hope this doesn't offend you. If it does, maybe you should pray more. But charismatics can shout. And there'd be no vultures circling that. Because mm -mm. there's nothing dead on the altar. But a church that's continually giving to missions when they could take the money and do something locally that would blow everybody's mind in town but instead they say let's send it to Belgium let's send it to Haiti let's send it to Norway let's send it all over the world <laughs> 
and I know you've got a pastor that's making a stand, but I challenge Eastgate, every family in here, every dad, every mom, every teenager, you need to stand up for what is right and say, I'm with my pastor all the way. Where are the abyssi eyes in this room that say, let me kill that giant. Let me kill. I close with this. When David met Goliath, Goliath's first words were, I will make you vulture food. Feed you the fowls or the vultures. He said, what he he was saying was, you are going to die such an ugly death and no one's going to bury you. Everyone's going to watch the enemy eat you. That's the face of fear. And David said, oh, they're going to eat. But they want a buffet. They don't want little old me. They want you, champ. And not only that, I love David. He said, I'm not just going to kill you and feed you to them. I'm going to feed the carcasses of all your bros. You know what he told Goliath? When I'm done with you, I'm chasing everything behind you. Goliath said, I don't think you're serious. And David said, I'll show you how serious I am. When I'm done defeating you, I want everything that sent you. I want everything behind you. I want everything manipulating your words. I want victory over what's behind the voice. Oh, you know, the, the Lord is telling me some of you are praying prayers that are too small. Just give me victory over this thing. Just help me defeat my Goliath. Help me defeat my addiction. You need to stand up and hear the voice of the enemy and look back and say, Oh, you're going to lose. But when I defeat you, I don't assume it's over. I'm not going to throw a rock and stand there and watch you get up. This time, I'm staying connected until you're defeated. Guess what? If somebody kills a giant, it will get contagious in the army. And everybody else will say, if they did it. I can do it. And I hear God saying, charge, charge, charge. Take it this year. Have revival. Chase the enemy. Where's that kid, Alex? Alex, where are you? Come on. Come here. I received, is it, are you Alex? He received a report when? Tuesday? That there was, there's cancer, they say. They don't know now. They found spots. Where? On his side. I asked him, there's asking his doctor, my doctor, yeah. and I said, I asked him, I said, do you, are you still serious? He said, because he was talking to me about me having got a piece of me in his chest. That's right, Alex. He, said, he, said, I know you have he doesn't know. He He's just speaking cancer. Yeah, he said, I did a biopsy. And they tell me, you don't have any of your Oh, we know. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> by the authority of the Word of God, and the power of the name of Jesus. I command you to be healed right now. I command you to be made whole. And not just cancer gone. I speak over your destiny. I speak over your anointing. You will raise 
miracles. Let there be the sick heal. Anoint these hands. Cast out devils. In the name of Jesus, let there be great power and authority. I release to you the gift of faith right now in your body, in your spirit, in the name of Jesus. Now chase him, Alex. Chase him, Alex. I release miracles right now in this house by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus. Let the sick be healed. Let the sick be made whole. Let the sick be made whole. Every demon of depression and anxiety and torment, leave this room now and we're chasing you in the name of Jesus. Let there be breakthroughs physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus! Spots be gone. Irregular heartbeat be gone. Blood sugar normalize now. Pain from arthritis disappear right now. Back pain go away right now. Knee pain go away right now. Kidney pain go away right now. Rico Karishata. You've had your last migraine. I don't know who that's for, but those are leaving you right now and they're never coming back. Get away from our sacrifice! Judas, you will regret this encounter. Because when I go to the cross, I'm also going down to hell. Taking the keys, you're going to see me. another time and you're going to wish that you never got near this sacrifice some of you I release a seriousness a holy focus a determination discipline temperance in your spirit to conquer that flesh. Why don't you lay hands on someone beside you and drive away anything. Speak in the spirit. Riko to rishikataya. Hiaboruko shakata. Submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil. And he will flee.
irregular heartbeat be made whole right now every diagnosis from this doctor we do not receive in the name of Jesus I speak our normal blood flow now in that body in the name of the Lord now in that heart in the name of Jesus Christ you need to let that voice out I speak vision to come back to you I curse hopelessness and words of discouragement and I speak life to your vision tears to your eyes and sound to your lips come on make up your mind I'm all in I'm all in I'm all in I'm all in kill this flesh God kill this bad attitude in me kill this rebellion in me Hallelujah. There's been many miracles. I feel virtue in here. There's always an empty feeling when virtue flows. Something's flowing in here. There is a path which no fowl knoweth and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. Jesus said, I am the way. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You're entering a place that the spirit world cannot see you. The Holy of Holies. Devils don't dwell there. Vultures can't see inside. He shall hide me under his feathers. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. Your prayer, your submission, getting under the covering. It's making you invisible. To the vultures of eye. Stop doing it your own way. Stop getting offended every chance you can. You're exposing where you are. Listen to this. I'm against the pastor. Where's he at? The Bible says that when you are angry, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Then it says, neither give place to the devil. In the Greek, that says, do not give your location to the devil. 
Too many of you are leaving atmospheres like this and getting into arguments before you get home. And you don't even realize it. But you're telling the vultures here, here's tonight's service. Here's my breakthrough. Here's my commitment. I release unity in every house right now. I come against the spirit of strife and division and arguing and contention. That is what's bringing the vultures to your home. Your speech. Go home and talk about how good the Lord is. Go home and tell your family what an amazing word Pastor preached Sunday. Come on, we were we intended on taking communion right here, but my dad just said he didn't feel that and he's my pastor. But felt like we need to chase. Come on, we've shouted, we've slaughtered, and now we're gonna chase after the vulture. Come on, come on. This is a standard altar call. Now we go home, but that's not what we well, that's not the kind of preaching we just heard. What we're gonna do right now is I want you to turn around if you're in this altar and I want you to chase. I want you to go out into this building, up into the balcony, if there's people there, everywhere. And I want you to find somebody. on This side, walk over to that side. That side, over to that side. And I want you to lay your hands on them. Uh, and all across this building, from the front to the back, from the front to the back, uh, I want you to begin to pray uh, in the Holy Ghost. Come on, we shouted, that's good. Uh, but the man of God, come on, my pastor said, now it's time to chase. Uh, Brother Herring just said, let's chase after him. I'm going to resist. Uh, find somebody and lift your voice over them come on come on we're going to take another few minutes right here yeah it's dead but I'm going to kill it completely I'm going to I'm not just going to come on shout now I'm going to go with intention link up with somebody give them the name of the disease that you need to die give them the name of the relative the family member the co-worker give them the situation financially give them the situation in your nation give them the whatever it is I want you to name it and agree and now begin to agree and say we're coming we're coming after you in the name of Jesus uh, adversary I went to the front I shouted uh, but that's not where this ends uh, it ends with you knowing uh, putting you on notice uh, you are going to flee for your safety uh, tomorrow you're going to wake up afraid uh, that I'm after you and I'm coming uh, I'm coming for my lost friend I'm coming uh, for the sickness that's it that's it that's it come on the health in my body I'm coming for it. Come on, the health in my mind. I'm coming for it. I'm chasing it. I'm chasing it. Ooh. I don't want you just running. I want you running to hide from me. That's it. That's it. That's it. Ooh, something is beginning to break at a level now. That's it. Come on. I see the vulture looking. Come on, looking for a hiding place. I see the spirit that's been plaguing your mind looking for a hiding place. I'm not gonna come back tomorrow. I'm gonna, I'm going to remain. Dissipated. I'm gone. That's it. God, that same sword you were going to kill me with. Come on, Goliath. I'm turning it on you. I said, I'm going to turn it on you. The weapon you plan to use against me tonight. I unsheathe your own sword and I execute. I execute you with that which you intended to execute me with. In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. This isn't a time for passive praying. This is a time for supplication. 
This is a time for you to lift your voice and let the adversary hear you pray. That's it. There's Sarakota Yadarabaha. If you don't know the words to speak, begin to open your mouth and let the Holy Ghost begin to speak through you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 Ooh. Yes. When you begin to feel it breaking, I want you to begin to start giving God praise. Right with with that person. Don't let that partner go. Uh, Come on, you just begin to put the adversarial notice. Uh, The vulture is fleed, uh, gone away. Uh, Now begin to give him praise. Uh, Begin to give him praise. Uh, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 One more time, lay your hand on that neighbor and begin to say the name of Jesus. Every one of you, I say it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I know there's another name the doctor spoke, but I speak the name of Jesus. I know the counselor said another word, but I say a name, Jesus. Come on, I know the the family counselor said divorce, but I say Jesus. I know they said anxiety, but I say Jesus. They called it, come on, perpetual out. Alcoholism, but I say in the name of Jesus. They said the affair would destroy it, but I say there's a name bigger than affair. It's Jesus. I know the devil told you the spirit of homosexuality couldn't be broken, but I say the name of Jesus. You ought to speak that name. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Now as one body together, why don't we shout that name on the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus! Mm. That was pretty good, but we need to shout that name one more time. One, two, three. Jesus! Ah. Now grab him by the hand, the person. Come on. The vulture has has fled and is on the, the run we're about to release one more shout. David in the, in the trench looking at the giant, nine feet tall, he's six feet deep. The Bible says he shouted unto battle. Only shout in the Bible that's ever recorded is the shout of battle. This is a war shout. And here's what you're going to do with your neighbor's hand in your hand. We're going to conclude the first night of missions. Where's where's Norway and Belgium? Get on up here, Belgium. Come on, Norway. Come on, Holland. Come on. All the country, all the different countries. Get up here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, we didn't just come to shout it out. We've came to chase the adversary and the prince of... We didn't... Come on. That was the word of God. The Prince of Norway. Come on, we're putting, we're coming after you and we're gonna take him in the name of Jesus. The principalities in Belgium. Come on, we're gonna chase after him. The Netherlands, we're chasing. Kenya, Africa, we're chasing. Mm, this is a war cry. And when we, after you begin to shout, You're going to begin to rejoice and you're going to begin to dance. You're going to dance. We're going to shout. We're going to rejoice for the victory. Come on, because where there is victory, there is rejoicing. There is praise, high praise in the house. Come on, now let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke and take dominion against the prince of power of the Netherlands. We come against you and we declare war. The spirit and the prince of Belgium in the name of Jesus we take dominion and authority right here in Vider Texas and we agree father that the adversary must flee and must flee seeking safety God I pray for the prince the ruler of Norway that he would flee and seek safety oh let him flee let Let there be revival God we speak against the adversary in Africa in India God I pray in Kenya God that 
revival would break out in the name of Jesus on the count of three. This isn't going to be a shout of victory. This isn't going to be a shout of praise. This is going to be a shout unto battle. Are you ready to shout? Come on, are you ready to shout? Grab somebody by the hand. We're about to rejoice. Are you ready, Brother Jennings? Don't sing Amazing Grace. Are you ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! Grab them by the hand. I know it's the first night, but you ought to dance like it's the last night you dealt with that disease. You, I know it's the first night, but this is the last night I deal with that anger. and I've been dealing with that. Come on, I've been dealing with that greed. I've been dealing with lust. Come on, it's in the name of Jesus. It's gone. That spirit of perversion. You gotta flee from me. It's in my mind. The thoughts of walking away from my family. It's gone. It's not coming after me. I'm coming after it. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. You gotta shout. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. This is Billy. Billy got the Holy Ghost on Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday night I baptized him, but as he was sitting in the water, he asked me a question. Billy said, Preacher, is this really going to work? He asked me, he said, Really? He'll forgive me for everything I've ever done. All I had that night was me and a couple others. Tonight we've got about 800. So I want you to keep your eyes open. Folks, does it really work? Did he really wash your sins away? It's joy unspeakable. Is it the greatest life you could ever live? then I need you to get with somebody and we ought to go out shouting. We ought to go out dancing. You might be wondering why Larry's jumping. He lived under the bridge, but he's got a suit and tie and a house on. Come on, we got a good reason to shout. We've got a good reason to dance. We've got a... Come on, Billy, get up here. This is how good life gets. Yeah! He really did wash your sins away. He really doesn't remember what you did because he's that kind of God. He's a good God. He's a good, good God. Hey, hey, I'm going up. Oh, so lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and sing for joy. Clap your hands, make a joyful noise. Blow the trumpet and shout, hey. Praise him for the victory. But worship is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we fight. Oh, yeah. Praise Him for the victory. Oh, oh. Say, lift up your voice and sing for joy. Oh, oh. Clap your hands, make the joyful noise. Blow the trumpet and child. Yeah. Come on, praise Him for the victory. The weapons we use are not bombs and guns. But worship is the way the battle is won. This is the way that we fight, oh yeah, we praise Him for the victory. Can I lift up your voice and sing for joy? Clap your hands, make a joyful noise. Blow the trumpet. 
Stay 